Shalom, Hashan Christ bless. You're back with 15 Minutes with the Captains. My name is Captain Ashanel. Now, in the last video we did, we touched on Nicanor and we touched specifically on 1 Maccabees chapter 7. We explained prior to that a bit about, you know, a summary of the history, what went down and how it played out. We read it in the scriptures in 1 Maccabees chapter 7. Now, when you jump to 2 Maccabees, chapter 14 and 15 it kind of goes into the same thing so we're gonna go here as well just to give you more i say more understanding but to show you it's not just in first Maccabees chapter 7 it is touched on here and it does get a bit more detailed in this part so we're going to start at second Maccabees chapter 14 read verse 1 the book of second Maccabees chapter 14 and verse 1 so before you do that just quickly to summarize again um we spoke about um wicked israelite called um, Alchemist, who wanted a high priest seat, you know, HNIC mindset. Um, so he went to King Demetrius to um, basically suck up to him to make false accusations, wicked accusations against Judas and the men. Um, so Demetrius sent in um, Bacchidas, then he sent in Nicanor, um, and Nicanor went in peaceably, speaking smooth words. Uh, what else happened? Speaking smooth words. The men didn't fall for it. They 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 saw what he was trying to do. Um, then the war took place. You understand? That's it in a nutshell. But we're going to read it. Second Maccabees chapter fourteen and verse one. After three years was Judas informed that Demetrius, the son of Seleucus, had been entered by the haven of Tripolis with a great power and navy, had taken the country and killed Antiochus and Lysias, his protector. Mm -hmm. Now, one alchemist who had been high priest and had defiled himself willfully in the times of their maligning with the Gentiles. Mingling with the Gentiles. So, a lot of our people wanted to mingle. They wanted to malign, mingle with the Gentiles. They wanted to be assimilated. We done? Mingling with the Gentiles, seeing that by no means he could save himself, nor have any more access to the holy altar, mm -hmm. came to King Demetrius in the hundred and one and fiftieth year, presenting unto him a crown of gold and a palm, and also of the bowls which were used solemnly in the temple. And so that day he held his peace. So he came to King Demetrius and his, his old goal was to bootlick. He wanted to bootlick to get position. That's what it was about. It's one of them sellout Negroes. One of them real sellout Negroes. We don't. How be it, having got an opportunity to further his foolish enterprise and being called... And that's what it was. It was a foolish enterprise. We don't. And being called into council by Demetrius and asked how the Jews stood affected and what they intended, he answered thereunto, those of the Jews that be called Assidians, whose captain is Judas Maccabeus, nourish war. They nourish war. Because when you read, like I mentioned earlier, when you read the, um, the other chapters, I think it's chapter three um, of the Maccabees, two, three, you read about the Assidians. They were, they were warriors. They nourished. They nourished. Like you nourish a baby with milk, they nourished war. They loved war. You know? And are seditious. And will not let the realm be in peace. Therefore, I, being deprived of mine ancestors' honor, I mean the high priesthood, am now come hither. So he wants the high priesthood. He's come to suck up to King Demetrius, and he's given um, a wicked report on Judas and the Sidians and the rest of the men. Read on. Verse 8. First, verily for the unfeigned care I have of things pertaining to the king. And secondly, even for that, I intend the good of my own countrymen, for all our nation is in no small misery, though the unadvised dealing of them aforesaid. So he's, he's basically lying, saying that he's got his people in, at heart. His main interest is the, the well-being of his people, which is BS, basically. You understand? He didn't have the well-being of the people in mind. Read on. Wherefore, O king, seeing thou knowest all these things, be careful for the country and our nation, which is pressed on every side, according to the clements that thou readily sawest unto all. For as long as Judas liveth, it is not possible that the state should be quiet. So as long as Judas Maccabees is alive, 
there will never be peace in the land. So something has to be done. We read that in um, First Maccabees chapter 7. Read on. This was no sooner spoken of him, but others of the king's friends, being maliciously set against Judas, did more, in, did more incense to Demetrius. You see, so everyone was against the Maccabees. You understand? Not only um, our, the wicked of our people, but the king had his friends, his circle, that were also against Judas and his people. Read on. And forthwith calling Nicanor, who had been master of the elephants and making him governor over Judea, he sent him forth. You see, so he called Nicanor being a master of the elephants and governor over Judea. Remember, he was at the time um, the, uh, the the king of Cyprus, the governor of Cyprus, to be precise. You know? Commanding him to slay Judas and to scatter them that were with him and to make alchemists high priests of the great temple. So that was the order given from Demetrius, King Demetrius, slay, destroy and make him high priest. Then the, then the heathen that had fled out of Judea from Judas came to Nicanor by flocks, thinking the harm and calamities of the Jews to be their welfare. Keep going. Now, when the Jews heard of Nicanor's coming and that the heathen were up against them, they cast earth upon their heads and made supplication to him that had established his people forever and who always helpeth his portion with manifestation of his presence. So it says, when the Jews heard of Nicanor coming and that the heathen were up against them, they cast um, earth upon their heads. So our people knew there was war coming. There was going to be tribulation coming. They never come, these heathens never come peaceably with good good intentions. It's always evil behind it, and our people knew that. Read on. So, at the commandment of the captain, they removed straightways from thence, and came near unto them at the town of the De saw. Now Simon, Judas' brother, had joined battle with Nicanor, but was somewhat discomfited through the sudden silence of his enemies. Mm. Nevertheless, Nicanor, hearing of the manliness of them that were with Judas and the courageousness that they had to fight for their country, does not try the matter by the sword. So, unfortunately, Simon was discomforted. Um, read that verse again. Verse 18. Sorry, verse 17. Now, Simon. 18. Verse 18. Nevertheless, Nicanor, hearing of the manliness of them that were with Judas. So the men that moved with Judas had a reputation. They had a rep. They, they were known for being gruesome in their business. 19. Verse 19. Wherefore he sent Posidinus and Theodotus and Matthias to make peace. So when they had taken long advisement thereupon, and the captain had made the multitude acquainted therewith, and it appeared that they were all of one mind. All of one mind. Okay, let's jump now. We're going to read the whole chapter. Jump down to... So you can see what's going on. You can see um, Judas and the men were not liked. Um, Demetrius and his people wanted to kill all of them. So let's just jump down to 30... Mm -mm -mm. One. Verse 31. But the other... Known that he was notably prevented. Jump to start 30, sorry. Verse 30. Notwithstanding, when Maccabeus saw that Nicanor began to be churlish unto him, and that he entreated him more roughly than he was wont, perceiving that such sore behaviour came not of good, he gathered together not a few of his men and withdrew himself from Nicanor. So he withdrew himself from Nicanor. We read that in chapter 7 as well. Because remember, Nicanor came to Maccabeus. Um, in peace, in a peaceable way, pretending, 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 pretending. But Maccabeus clocked on that, hold on, this is not his true intentions. So he withdrew himself. You know? But the other, knowing that he was notably prevented by Judas' policy, came into came into the great and holy temple and commanded the priests that were offering their usual sacrifices to deliver him the man. Mm -hmm. And when they swear that they could not tell where the man was was whom he sought. So the priest said, we don't know who, who this guy is. We don't know where he is. Keep going. He stretched out his right hand toward the temple and made an oath in this manner. If ye will not deliver me Judas 
as a prisoner. I will lay this temple of God even with the ground, and I will break down the altar and erect a notable temple unto Bacchus. So this is blasphemy. Now he's playing with the Lord here. Seriously playing with the Lord, because now he's saying, you don't deliver Judas to me, I'm going to lay the Lord's house or the temple of God even with the ground, and I will break down the altar and erect a notable temple to Bacchus. Hmm. Read on. After these words, he departed. So he read all of this in First Maccabees chapter 7. So he departed. Keep going. Then the priests lifted up their hands toward heaven and besought him that was ever a defender of their nation, saying in this manner, Thou, O Lord, of all things, who has need of nothing, was pleased that the temple of thine habitation should be among us. Therefore now, O holy Lord, of all holiness, keep this house ever undefiled, which lately was cleansed, and stop every unrighteous mouth. Okay, so... Again, we read this in Maccabees 7. So Judas sending up a prayer prior to war, saying, Lord, give us the strength to kill these heathens for what they've done and what they've been saying. Okay. Verse so, 37. Now was the accused unto Nicanor, one Razis, one of the elders of Jerusalem, a lover of his countrymen, and a man of very good report, who for his kindness was called a father of the Jews. Mm -hmm. For in the former times when they mingled not themselves with the Gentiles. He had been accused of Judaism and did boldly jeopard his body and life with all vehemency for the religion of the Jews. Okay, we 39. So Nicanor, willing to declare the hate that he bear unto the Jews. So Nicanor to show, just to show how wicked and evil this heathen was, just to show you, read on. Sent above 500 men of war to take him. So to take this one man, 500, keep going. For he fought by taking him to do the Jews much hurt. Mm -hmm. Now, when a multitude would have taken the tower and violently broken into the outer door, and bade that the fire should be brought to burn it. He being ready to be taken on every side fell upon his sword. So he fell upon his sword. Being prepared to be taken, he fell upon his own sword. Um, da, 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 da. Keep going, keep going. Choosing rather to die manfully than to come into the hands of the wicked to be abused otherwise than beseemed his noble birth. So I'll take my own life then fall into the wicked heathen hands. That's his mindset. Keep going. But missing his stroke through haste, the multitude also rushing within the doors, he ran boldly up to the wall and cast himself down manfully among the thickest of them. But they quickly give him back and a space being made, he fell down into the midst of the void place. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, while there was yet breath within him, being inflamed with anger, he rose up, and though his blood gushed out like sprouts of water. So, obviously, he didn't, um, what's the word, fall upon his sword properly, and blood was gushing out. Keep going. And his wounds were grievous, mm -hmm. yet he ran through the midst of the throng, and standing upon the steep rock, when, when as his blood was now quite gone, he plucked out his bowels. Look what he did. Read it again. He did what? He plucked out his so bowels. he plucked out his bowels. And taking them in both his hands and cast them upon the throng and calling upon the Lord of life and spirit to restore him those again, he thus died. He thus died. So that shows how gruesome you know, this time period was. You read about the Maccabees and what went down during that time period. It's no joke. Our forefathers were zealous. So if you want an example of how we need to be today, read about the Maccabees and the mindset that men moved in. Okay, 15 and 1. For Second Maccabees, chapter 15 and verse 1. But Nicanor, hearing that Judas and his company were in the strong places about Samaria, Resolve without any danger to sit upon them on the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, the Jews that were compelled to go with him said, O oh, destroy not so cruelly and barbarously, but give honour to that day. So give honour to the Sabbath day, please, Nicanor. Which he that seeth all things hath honoured with holiness above other days. The Lord created it. He hollowed the Sabbath day. Keep going. 
Then the most ungracious wretch demanded, if there were a mighty one in heaven. This is what he said. If there's a mighty one in heaven. That had commanded the Sabbath day to be kept. Mm -hmm. And when they said, there is in heaven a living Lord and mighty and commanded the seventh day to be kept. Then said the other, and I also am mighty upon earth. And I command to take arms and to do the king's business. Yet he obtained not to have his wicked will done. Mm -hmm. So Nicanor, in exceeding pride and haughtiness, did determined to set up a public monument of his victory over Judas and them that were with him. See how arrogant and prideful this heathen was, Nicanor. Disregarded any of our beliefs. His focus was on obviously handling his leader's business and killing the Maccabees, Judas and his men. Keep going. Verse 7. But Maccabeus had ever sure confidence that the Lord would help him. Wherefore, he exhorted his people not to fear the coming of the heathen against them, but to remember the help which in former times they had received from heaven, and now to expect the victory and aid which should come unto them from the Almighty. So that's what we encourage you to do, the same way Maccab um, Judas Maccabees encouraged the men, the nation as a whole. Don't be scared of these heathens. They always come and attack us. They try to put us down. You know, they always come with negativity against us. Don't be scared. Look what happened in the past. The Lord has always looked after us. And that's what we encourage you brothers and you sisters to do as well. That's why it's it's important you understand, you study the scriptures, you read about the Maccabees and understand how we moved as a people. Read on. And so comforting them out of the law and the prophets and with all putting them in mind of the battles that they won or four, he made them more cheerful. You see, because you can go back to the time of when we left Egypt and we started to take over lands. All the battles we had from then, we overcame. So long as we did what the Lord required us to do, what he said to do, we overcame all the nations. You understand? Um, what verse you in? Verse 10. And when he had stirred up their minds, he gave them their charge, shewing them therewithal the falsehood of the heathen and the breach of oaths. You understand? Because when you read um, is it Joshua 1 and is it 9, where it says, don't be scared, don't be afraid, be not, what's it, be not afraid. Read, read it real quick. Joshua 1 and 9. Judas knew this. He was encouraging the brothers and sisters through the scriptures. He knew the Lord was with us. Come on. The, the book of Joshua, chapter 1 and verse 9. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage? Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. So, where, so wherever we go, the Lord is with us. And that's something we all need to remember. That's the same thing Judas here was encouraging the people to do. Read on. Second Maccabees, chapter 15, verse 11. Thus he armed every one of them. Not so much with defense of shields and spears as with comfortable and good words. And beside that, he told them a dream worthy to be believed, as if it had been so indeed, which did not a little rejoice them. Mm -hmm. And this was his vision, that Onias, who had been high priest, a virtuous and a good man, rev reverend in conversation, Gentle in condition, well spoken also, and exercised from a child in all points of virtue, holding up his hands, prayed for the whole body of the Jews. Okay, so let's jump now. Jump to 21. Verse 21. Maccabeus, seeing the coming of the multitude and the diverse pre pre preparations of arm armor, and the fierceness of the beast stretched out his hand toward heaven and called upon the Lord that worketh wonders, knowing that victory cometh not by arms, but even as it seemeth good to him, he giveth it to such as are worthy. So the Lord gives victory to those that are worthy. So he stretched out his arms and he prayed and called upon the Lord to deliver a victory. He understood. You can have all the military power in the world. But it's the Lord that determine who wins these wars. So when you watch your news channels and you see all this stuff going on, the Lord's behind it all. He determines who's going to win whatever war that takes place. Now also, O Lord of heaven, send a good angel before us, 
for a fear and dread unto them. So please send an angel before us. Keep going. And through the might of thine arm, let those be stricken with terror that come against thy holy people to blaspheme. And he ended thus. So that was a prayer. Prayer for the, like in Luke 18, read it in Zerach 36, Zerach 36, 38. It talks about the prayer of the destruction of the enemy. Same thing. So when we pray, we should always be praying for the destruction of the enemy. Don't, I know Christianity prays for, what's it, loving everyone and holding hands and one world and all that. Our forefathers weren't praying for that. Our forefathers always prayed for the destruction of the enemy. Read on. Verse 25. Then Nicanor and they that were with him came forward with trumpets and songs. But Judas and his company encountered encountered the enemies with in invocation and prayer mm -hmm. so that fighting with their hands and praying unto god with their hearts they slew no less than 30 and 5 thousand men they slew no less than 35 thousand men think about just picture in your mind 35 thousand people men just in in in, in a field that's how many they killed. Read on. For through the appearance of God, they were greatly cheered. Mm -hmm. Now, when the battle was done, returning again with joy, they knew that Nicanor lay dead in his harness. They knew they killed Nicanor. He was dead. Keep going. Then they made a great shout and a noise, praising the Almighty in their own language. And Judas, who was ever the chief defend defender of the citizens, both in body and mind, and who continued his love toward his countrymen all his life, commanded to strike off Nicanor's head mm. and his hand with the shoulder and bring them to Jerusalem. You see, so it's a bit more detail than um, 1 Maccabees chapter 7. So it says, Judas, um, the chief defender of the citizens, um, what did he do? He commanded... Um, to strike off Nicanor's head, his hand along with his shoulder. You understand? So he's talking about his whole arm. Um, and bring them to Jerusalem. Keep reading. So when he was there and had called them of his nation together and set the priest before the altar, he sent for them that were of the tower mm -hmm. and shewed them foul Nicanor's head and the hand of the blasphemer which with proud brags he has stretched out against the holy temple of the Almighty. So that came back to bite him. That day he stood there in the temple, stretched out his hand and cursed out um, the priests and, and the Lord. That came back to bite him. Read on. And when he had cut out the tongue of the ungodly Nicanor. So he also cut out the tongue of Nicanor. Keep going. He commanded that they should give it a give it by pieces unto the fowls and hang up the reward of his madness before the temple. Now these are people, these Maccabees you don't want to play with. You didn't want to play with these men back then. You understand? And we need more spirits like that today. You know, you want to call yourself a Maccabee, Maccabeus, whatever you make sure you're coming correct. You know what I mean? Make sure you're coming correct because this is who you need to mirror yourself on. Read on. So every man prays toward the heaven, the glorious Lord, saying, Blessed be he that have kept his own place undefiled. He hanged also Nicanor's head upon the tower, an evident and manifest sign unto all of the help of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And they ordain all with a common decree, in no case to let that day pass without solemnity, but to celebrate the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which in the Syrian tongue is called Adar. Adar, when you read... The Sondervan Bible Dictionary states it's the 12th month of the Babylonian calendar. Now, when you look at this image on the screen, you can see that Adar falls between the period of February and March. Thus went it with Nicanor, and from that time forth, the Hebrew had the city in their power. And here will I make an end, and if I have done well, and as is fit in the story, it is that which I decide. But if sl slend slenderly and meanly, it is that which I could attain unto. 
For as it is hurtful to drink wine or water alone, and as wine mingled with water is pleasant, and delighteth the taste, even so speech finely frame, delighteth the ears of them that read the story, and here shall be an end. So, what's that going into? Listen, <laughs> the, the, it's saying here, the Maccabees were so gruesome in what they did that what we're reading here had to be kind of toned down. What down, toned down, whatever word you want to use. Because it was too gruesome to put everything in the Maccabees, in, in the books we're reading. That's how gruesome and ferocious these men were. So we, we, we've been given the watered down version. As gruesome as it may be reading it, this is the watered down version of what the Maccabees did and what they stood for. So hopefully you've got some understanding um, of, of Nicanor. Um, again, you can read it in First Maccabees chapter 7. You can read it in um, f um, Second Maccabees 14, 15. But read the whole Maccabees. Read the whole Maccabees. It's, these are two heavy books. A lot of um, stories. You can see where Hollywood gets a lot of their, their, their ideas from, their inspiration from, because we, we see films today based on what we're reading here. So with that, stay in the spirit. Most high Christ bless. Shalom. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. 